Shiny Stockings played on my favorite mute, my old Humes and Berg cup mute. Um, hang on, let me center myself here. Center yourself, men. Happy St. Patty's Day, wearing my favorite green shirt in honor of the St. Patty's Day. All right, that's enough of my jive ass Irish accent. So, hi again. Andy here, talking today about mutes. I know, mutes, boring. Well, it's kind of an important home, so I guess I got a text. Um, you know, I'm still working on this left-handed playing thing. And like I say, you can see I'm still getting a little better facility at it. Chops are still a little, you know, rough around the edges. So apologies for any clams. But so trying to figure out, you know, video topics that I want to talk about that I can physically talk about. And I want to, I've got a lot of them in mind for specifically talking about lead trumpet aspects that I'm not quite there for. Chops aren't really back. And my facility, the left hand, I can do some right hand short bursts, but too much of it, things really start to hurt. So have to be careful. It's a kind of a balancing act here, practice-wise. So just had a great visit from my some trumpet buds. Dan and Kevin came, um, had a nice visit, and I was talking about my next video, which is going to be on mutes, of all things. So if you're not into talking about mutes, but... It's something I could talk about and play some little licks on um, and not strain myself too badly. Um, that is my favorite mute, this guy. The old Humes and Berg cup mute. To me, it's still the cup mute sound. And if you're going to be a player, if you're going to play anywhere, you're going to have to have a basic set of mutes, okay? Cup mute, you need a good basic set. Cup mute. Straight mute, which, which you'll probably use more than any any other. Harmon mute, plunger. I mean, you bare, bare minimum need those four. And you need a decent one on each count. Now, I have loads of mutes. I have a whole literal bag of tricks here. Um, and I'll talk about the different ones. Uh, kind of one at a time here, okay? So, my favorite mute... Oh, there goes my phone again. I'm a popular guy getting text messages today. Anyway... The cut mute. Um, a really popular one that's out there is this guy. I don't get any endorsements or anything from any of these. I'm just showing you what I have. The solo cut mute is cool um, because it is. I'm gonna put my put the horn down, sir. Um, is adjustable. Ooh, I feel like I'm on the Home Shopping Network here. Latest in cut mute technology. Um, this guy is cool. Um, for, if you need softer, like softer passages, um, if you have a marking, you see markings for tight cup, which sounds like a medical issue. I don't know. <laughs> um, but I'm not super wild about this mute, the sound of this when it's all the way out, right? Because, hang on, I'll adjust this so I don't blast right into the mic side. You know, it almost sounds like a... Ooh, here I come back again. Um, it almost sounds like a straight mute, right? Um, but if you move this this little thing, you can move, put it much closer to the bell, right? Um, It's a cool sound, right? Um, so, definitely another alternative. The the mute, big cup mute, you see the um, Lincoln Center guys using is the old Ray Robinson cup mute, um, which I have one of right here. Um, oh dear. Phones are ringing, text messages. Lord, something must be burning. Something's on fire somewhere. <laughs> um, anyway, I have an old Ray Robinson uh, cut mute. 
a gift from my friend Wayne. Thank you, Wayne. Um, and this one's interesting because it's kind of beat up, right? Corks are a little, you know, iffy corkage there. And the other thing, this gazo, the LeBlanc gazo, you can see it's got a huge bell flare, right? That's how the horn plays. The sound just like really flares out into the air. <sighs> Bigger bell flare like that, a lot of mutes don't fit right. They're not gonna, they're not, they're gonna go, they're gonna sit too far in, which is gonna mess up the intonation. Um, anyway, I have another horn here I can use for some of these. I can sort of use this old, my old Ray Robinson. Um, right, it sits like all the way in. Back I go here, let's adjust this again. It's a cool sound, but uh, pitch is a little wonky on it. But that is a, a mute you see out there, and I know there are some repros out there. Roger Ingram makes some excellent mutes that I think are actually made by Warburton. Um, as in mouthpiece uh, Warburton. Trumpets, mutes, everything. He makes all sorts of stuff. He's a, a brilliant craftsman. I think he makes the Roger Ingram line. Again, I don't get any endorsements from any of these. I'm just showing you you know, what's out there, what I have in my bag of tricks. Uh, but an interesting one that come, has come to my attention recently is a guy in New York, Huber, H-U-B-E-R, music. Backwards, I know, but anyway. Um, wonderful. These are wonderful mutes. And I use this quite a lot. So very similar to the old Humes and Berg. And, you know, it doesn't, it sits right in the horn. Um, so Huber also makes, uh, he makes all sorts of mutes. Um, also makes a really cool, the old style straight mutes, which I have in here somewhere, my bag of tricks. Um, I have an old Humes and Berg straight mute here somewhere. It's so beat up, it's not worth finding. Uh, but Huber, again, he makes a, Straight mute, right? Pretty cool. Looks looks pretty neat. And it's got a... It comes with two of these top parts. It comes off. All right? Peekaboo. <laughs> anyway, uh, I liked this one. It's got more of a flare on the top. Now I have to put this back together while I'm videoing here. There we go. Um, you notice I'm playing a little bit more right-handed. I, I can for short bursts. Again, I have to be careful. I don't do too much because it really will start to hurt. Um, but I wanted you to, you know, see something today. And this is a cool, cool sounding mute. Let's see what's a good tune. Okay. Kind of getting ahead of myself because I was going to talk about the mutes one at a time. However, whatever free form, uh, free form here today, folks. Uh, so Huber mutes, very cool. He's got a website. I just you know saw it online and bought a couple. They're very cool. Anyway, back to um, cut mutes. Do I have another one? Cut me wise, no. I think I've exhausted all the cut mutes, um, cut mutes that I have. There's some other ones out there, okay? I'm going to tell you in all honesty, the very popular one is the Dennis Wick cut mute. And I have an opinion on this, which is that it is the wrong material. It's metal, which I think is not the right material for a cut mute. It's just the wrong sound to me. It's just too, I don't know. I mean, there's a place for a, literally any mute. Um, there would be a place, especially if you played like in a symphony orchestra, there would be a piece where you'd probably want to use it. For my, for me and my little world, not so much. I don't personally like the Dennis Wood cut mute. Um, I get by with the Humesenberg, and now this Huber one, which I've worked into the mix a lot more. Um, so, 
all right? Basic set of mutes, cut mute, very important. My favorite mute, actually, the cut mute. But straight mute, since my last thing was on straight mute, let's talk about the straight mute. Um, my favorite of the trum cores, this is my, he's got the, no. oh, the humanity, dropping mutes. As if, you, if you've not dropped a mute in a very quiet part of a rehearsal, you haven't lived, son. Um, anyway, this is my favorite mute, trum core. The, I like the aluminum one, okay? Um, and again, it sits a little, little too far in on this horn. Okay, uh, but great mute, great all around, really big, big sound. Um, the one I have that relates most directly to that is a different drum core, same mute, but with a copper top. Um, it was my understanding this was a mute that Phil Smith on uh, New York Philharmonic, this apparently was his straight mute for many years. And so you can hear a difference here. This one I have a little bit thicker corks on it, so it fits better in the old Gazo trumpet here. Okay, uh-oh, my trash is getting picked up, so the crashing is what you hear. Right, a little bit softer. A little bit softer edge to it, I guess you could say. So, trum core, great. Again, not in a, I don't officially endorse these. I just use them, and because they freaking work. Great mutes. I know the Symphony, San Luis Symphony uses trum cores, I believe. I mean, they have other ones they use. I think that's their main one, though, and for good reason. Great mute. So, um, on the straight mute front, okay, Dennis Wick. This is this, boy, you see this mute literally all over. Right, this has been the standard straight mute for a jillion years. And it's still a good mute. I have occasion to use it. There are some things I still use it on. Um, Trum core here, to me, has a little bit bigger quality to it, maybe. It's a little bit more point to it, maybe. Um, anyway, Dennis Wick, straight mute. You see this one at any music store. Um, Dennis Wick. Ooh. Anyway, uh, still a good mute. Really, really even. Like, top to bottom, the scale on it is wonderful. Um, so, good mute. Uh, very interesting straight mute. I want to show you. Sorry, I'm not organized at all. Um, mutes literally all over the place. So the Solo, we talked about the Solo cup mute. Well, they make a really interesting genie lamp. No, it's a straight mute they make. That's pretty cool. Um, this is a pretty punchy mute. Pretty big, right? So, okay. Better go laugh to the left hand. Things are talking to me a little bit on the right side. West Side Story. Um, very loud mute. I like this. Actually, I think it's a good pit mute. My friend Paul Barron uses this. He endorses the solo mutes. Um, it's fun. It's fun. Very loud. You wouldn't want to use it in all places at all times. But, um, great mute. So, anyway, pardon me while I dig out <laughs> this guy. Okay. The Trum Corps Lyric straight mute. Uh, some people call this the gig saver. Because, man, if you need to have a really soft passage and mute, this guy. This is your guy. They did, like, a cool-looking pattern one. And that's kind of neat looking. Um, trump chord lyric straight. If you have something really soft. Now, this does, surprisingly, these do fit in this big, you know, flare bell. Um, give you a taste of this. Nice sound. Um, 
very soft, you know. This mute is the one I use for the three notes I sweat the most as a professional trumpet player. The three notes that I lose sleep over, quite literally, are the last three notes of West Side Story. It's the saddest ending, right? Spoilers! Tony gets shot and killed. Um, if you haven't seen it by now, okay, go watch it. It's all great. Every version of it is spectacular. Uh, Movie-wise, I'm talking. Um, the last three notes of the score, the original show score, it's um, Somewhere, which is some, one of the most beautiful songs, Leonard Bernstein. Most beautiful melody, right? Um, well, the ending, you have three A's above the staff that you have to play at the very, very, very dead end of the show. Um, that are very soft. I think it's written three P's. Pianissimo? Maybe? I don't know, whatever you call that. Uh, and see if I can embarrass myself on this. All right? So. But this is what that mute is for. Fired. Take two. So, a little bit too much articulation on it, but you get the idea. Very, very soft, very distant, and that is the mute for that. So the trump core lyric straight is a spectacular mute. Really great, great one for that. Um, okay, uh, where am I now? We talked about straight mutes, we talked about cut mutes. Now comes the big kahuna, which is the harmon mute. Okay, um, so here I have to switch horns, because my favorite is mute in the whole wide world is my Jarrell Bubble Copper. Okay, sorry I'm not really centered. I get tired of moving the iPad back and forth. You get the idea, though. This guy I bought up in Omaha, Thompson Music. Uh, Mike Thompson has a wonderful shop up in Omaha. And I was there a couple days when I was on the road with Dirty Dancing. Spent a couple days in his shop, bugging him, playing all his trumpets he had. And I wound up, almost bought a great Shilky B5 up there. Great horn. Uh, it's just, just a little too expensive and not really the right time to be switching when I was on, you know, in the middle of a tour, it just didn't feel right. And, um, but he had these old mutes. Somebody had just brought these mutes in. I guess they, the guy had a, <laughs> he had a fuck it sale. He got rid of all his stuff, took it to the store, said, here, you guys do what you want with it. So, uh, this was part of these old mutes, just literally just sitting there. And I just spied it and thought, hmm. And it's a great mute. Now, with you have a Harmon, okay, everybody always, if you play a lot of shows, you have to have this guy with it, right, the stem. Um, because if you play shows, man, you're going to need that. Um, a lot of writing for, which I think is ridiculous, stem, half stem, you know, full stem. I'll show you the sound difference, which is minuscule. But for this one, it doesn't fit in my, hang on, the big flare horn, right? It just, it sits too far in. And it's... Too, it's It's not as bad as I remember it, but uh, as far as the pitch, but it's a great sounding mute and it's loud. It's really, you know, it's a pretty, it's just a really great mute um, without the stem. So throw it aside for a minute. That's the Austin Custom Brass Doublers Cornet <laughs> for all your trumpet needs. Uh, Trent Austin out in KC, man. <sighs> Those guys are terrific. Love them. I've bought all sorts of shit from them, um, including this horn. I needed a cornet and didn't want to spend, you know, $3,000. This guy is, I honestly don't remember, but is well under 1000 bucks. Maybe in the neighborhood of five or 600 maybe. This is a wonderful instrument, this doublers cornet. I love playing it. Um, haven't been doing a lot on it because I've had this whole left-handed, right-handed thing going on um, with my you know, pinch nerve and stuff. But it's good for the showing this mute. all 
blues, man. That kind of blue album. I just listened to part of it again, uh, actually just this morning, before um, Dan and Kev came over. I just, I could listen to it. That's a Desert Island album, for sure, if there ever was. It's still wonderful. Um, in my opinion, Cannonball steals the whole record. Cannonball Adderley of the three soloists. I mean, it's so interesting hearing all everybody. is so, you know, Miles, Cannonball, Coltrane. I mean, has there ever been a better horn line in a combo? And they're so distinct. That's what I just love about that, you know. Train, a lot of people, they just are like, yeah, I don't know, they just don't understand it or whatever. It's so, because compared to the others, he's just like, what is this, you know? Took me years of listening to that album to kind of mm, try to think, at least, that I kind of get it. Um, it. Train was just like, I don't know, Mozart, Beethoven, Shakespeare, whatever. Genius human is what he was. And the cool thing about Coltrane is that he was not... You know, as Wynton Marsalis said, all you need to know about Train is you listen to the first known recording of him, which is him as a, he was in a Navy band, I think in some World War II, I don't know. But he was, he didn't sound like anything. And he made himself into the Titan that he became. So that's what it takes, man. Practice, 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 practice. Oh, anyway, I'm getting, getting away from my topic, which is mutes. So this guy, the Jorrell Bubble, um, wonderful mute. That's actually my favorite. That is my favorite mute. So that being said, I have the same mute in silver, right? And it's not a huge difference. By the way, I must say, I do think the mutes play better when they're beaten up a little bit. I don't know why that is. Um, used to see some mutes. See Susan Slaughter in the St. Louis Symphony had some mutes that were just like silly. She had a big bag of mutes that she would have. And some of them look like this. They look like somebody played baseball with them. Anyway, let's um, just to you know be showing you. Oh, just have to moisten the bell a little bit so it sticks. I hate that when the harmon falls out. Is there anything worse? It sounds so bad. Um, anyway, so just to give you a comparison. How about we don't play all blues with the stem in? Anyway, you get the idea. That's the same mute, but in silver. So, all right, put that one aside. Now we get into some interesting stuff. Okay, Best Brass makes a really good one. Best Brass is a Japanese company. They make, they're very well known for, um, what do they call it? Like a practice mute they have that is one that you can listen to. Um, I think they still have that. Um, they have a lot of, Wonderful mutes. The straights, they're all good. This Harmon mute is interesting because it has, it's rubber coated on top. It's not a cork. Most mutes are got corks on it. But the rubber, um, when I first got it, now this one's, it's got, it's like, it's the, it's the mileage. It's not the years. It's like life itself. It's not the years. It's the mileage. Sound familiar? Um, this guy has got some miles on it. Um, the rubber's worn down. <sighs> But it's another good option you could look at. They're expensive. I mean, it's over a hundred bucks. Uh, it's a little bit different sound. Um, let's take the stem out here. Give you a better sense. Houston, we have a problem. The stem won't come out of this. There we go. Get rid of that. So let's try that again. Um, introduces anyway it's an interesting a little bit i don't know maybe thinner sound i don't know i don't know what the right word is for that but it's an interesting very interesting harmon um okay here we're getting down to the one i use all the time every time i have okay i have more harmons than any other mute i have three more to show you 
Three more, believe it or not. Um, this guy is, it's called Emo. Not Emo, like the pizza. If you live in St. Louis, you know what I'm talking about. No, E-M-O. Emo. It's like an emotional mute. <laughs> uh, now, it's kind of a repro of the original Harmon Harmon. Uh, funnily enough, the one I don't own is a Harmon Harmon. I don't actually like that mute. So, the name Harmon mute. You know, Harmon. Harmon Harmon. It sounds like a law firm. Law firm of Harmon and Harmon. Um, so, here's the story on the emo. I keep it around because, there again, there are some shows... They call for more of a, that sound. I think it's a little... This is like the style that Miles played. and But there's a couple licks um, on shows from the 70 Chorus Line. There's a couple Harmon licks that... Um, let's see if I can remember it. Something like that. It's in Chorus Line. Uh, it's, a, it's a just more... What do you call Miles style... Harmon Harmon kind of style, but I like this one better, much better than the original Harmon, right? Right? That's that more you know, Miles, Milesy sounding Harmon. But there's a couple of those licks in Chorus Line, which is a show from the 70s, 75, I think it is. Um, I did a whole video on Chorus Line that I'm not going to attempt in many of those hard licks. I am really not there yet. Um, Chop-wise, you know, arm-wise, I'm not there. Um, but I love that sound, right? I love it for certain things. It's the right thing. Um, so... We come to the last Harmon mute. Again, we go back to Trumcore land. The Zinger, they call this. The Zinga. Um, this guy, I actually love better with the stem in. It's my favorite mute. So check this out, right? Um, I think this, no, this has to work on the core. I will use it on the cornet. Um, I would get my Bach out, my Bach trumpet out, but I just happen to have the cornet sitting right here. So what the hell? So here is um I was around late 80s 90s there were still some of what they called the Mickey bands around like territory bands the kind of old sort of weird subgenre of big band music called Sweet, the Sweet Bands. Uh, Mickey Bands was sort of a slightly derogatory term. That's kind of the style, though, what I just played, that kind of Ricky Tick, you could call it. Um, Jasmine Blues. Oh, by the way, I was going to talk about the stem in, stem out thing, so let's do that. So that's half stem, right? So here's that sound. Okay. Um, full stem. I don't want it to fall out, but... So that is... Okay. Right? Uh, so here's the thing. When you take the stem out on that mute... It's a... Uh, Interesting sound. It's different. It's a little, I don't know. It's just different. I haven't quite found a use for it. I'm not saying it's bad. Not at all. It's great mute. I just, uh, for Harmon without stem, I lied. I have one more Harmon after this one, believe it or not. Um, but good mutes. Good mutes. All of them. Trump core. So those are almost all the Harmons. However, I saved the best for last. Prepare yourself. Um... Whoa. <laughs> this is made by a cat in Sweden, of all places. Um, it's Ulven. Handmade in Sweden. It's a repro of the Dizzy's Harmon. If you look at old video of Dizzy playing, this was his mute. Um, this style, Harmon. 
And the guy makes this, and he makes a cup mute also, like Dizzy played. Like those old Shastock cup mutes, which are still around, but they're very expensive. Uh, somebody wanted me to buy theirs once, and it was like 160 bucks, which is a little in the neighborhood of what I spent on this, I'm embarrassed to say. Uh, it was a treat for me about a year ago or so I bought this guy. And it took, no joke, four months to get to me. Four months, because he shipped it from Sweden. And then it sat, I kept doing the track your package thing, you know, I kept looking at that. And, um, here, I'm talking, so I'll center my, um, center yourself, man. Um, what do you think? It's coming along. <laughs> anyway, it sat in New York for like two months. Um, finally got here in an old, actually in a, funnily enough, in a completely beat to shit package. But here it was in one piece. So... This mute is really interesting because he puts, he says file corks if you need to, which it does, you know, really thick cork. However, it doesn't fit in my Bach, right? It just sits way too far out. But with the gazo horn, it's got that big bell flare. Well, guess what? It fits. Now, here's the thing. It has, it comes with a stem, but check this, man. Look at this. It's still, it's like magic. I feel like I'm performing a magic trick, right? That's ridiculous, man. I could beat somebody with this, or they could use it to tenderize me. Whoa! Ta da! <laughs> anyway, enough silliness. Here's what that sounds like without the stem. Because I don't, the stem's okay. But um, without the stem, okay, fits pretty good. right cool cool sounding mute so this this is my favorite favorite little trumpet toy um put that back on the mute rack um and put the stem back in it so i don't lose it i've, I've actually done that before where i lose it's the stems, they all get mixed up in the bottom of the mute bag, and I'm trying to put the wrong one in the wrong arm. And anyway, uh, really interesting but expensive handmade in Sweden. Schmiedisch um, mute. That is the last Harmon. However, now again, you're going to play shows, okay? The happy mute, right? Happy mute is what we call this because it's the perfect name for it. It's actually the stone line, uh, clear tone, they call it. But if you see markings for solo tone, this is your guy. And oh, it's impossible to play a sad song on this mute. Right? Here, let's adjust it a little bit. Oh, here's a good uh, lick from it. Producers. Right? Prisoners of Love. Um, happy Mute. Now, the problem with this is they always write wah-wahs for this mute, and it's like half a mile. <laughs> Cartoon music. So, anyway, it's a happy mute. you got to have a good solo tone. There's a lot out there. The only one I own, actually, of that one, believe it or not, I don't own 17 copies. Of a solo tone is that one, the old clear tone. Um, now we come to what is uh, also a basic necessary mute, which is a plunger. This is the best, this is maybe my favorite mute, period. Um, this is um, Hirschman mute, the KR Indie. Go Plunger Max. They make two. The Max and then the regular one. The nice one about the Max, it's like almost the size of a trombone plunger. And the cool thing about it, I'll show it in a minute. You can play it with the straight mute. So if you're going to do some old Ellington, any Duke Ellington music, there's a lot of going to be a lot of straight mute with, with the plunger. That's traditionally played with, I just had it, this guy, right, which is the um, Pixie, also Humes and Berg, 
right? You put this in. <clears throat> okay. It's a it's actually not a bad mute. Right? It's really trad jazz, you know, it's perfect for that. Um and again, the Ellington stuff. Okay, let's see. Um It's a cool sound. There's actually one note in chorus line that calls for pixie. One, boom, about two notes, I beg your pardon. One measure, two notes on pixie, of all things. The cool thing about this Hirschman mute, again, I don't get any endorsements or any of this stuff. Again, it's what I use, okay? Um, hang on, I better switch to the left hand. And the nice thing about this is that I can use... A regular straight mute with the thing, right? So I'll put in my regular straight mute. Hang on. Right. Another thing about this. It's got this cool valve on the top. It's a penny. I don't know if you can see that. Okay. And it's adjustable. So, okay, here's the thing. Clark Terry always said, <clears throat> excuse me, Clark Terry always said you had to drill a hole through the metal middle of the plunger. Well, this one has the hole, right? But you can adjust it. So there's known, none, you know, part way. It's I'm trying to line that up. I like it kind of almost all the way open, but not quite. I like to get a little, I think you get a little more sound back toward yourself that way. Um, so, okay, back to the mooch. like it it means i'm doing something right um anyway that is a great mute the hirschman straight center myself again I feel really centered today man all right so lewis here over my shoulder hopefully approves of some of that um so that's what i'm thinking about today that's what's got me out practicing long video my longest one so hopefully you don't mind spending a minute or two with old andy here dandy andy um <laughs> uh just keeps me practicing man keeps me working it's kind of stuff just you know get all the gadgets out play with you know play with the toys literally you know you feel like a i feel like a kid with all my old hot wheels cars or something you know just get all the mutes out sometimes and just goof around i clearly have a Harmon addiction i have a problem there <laughs> i own more of those but again i find uh, places to play these things different shows, different pieces of music, you know, play something, you're like, I always have something in my mind, because, you know, I'm listening constantly, listening to, I, I listen to everything. This, just this morning, before uh, Dan and Kev came over, I was had Kind of Blue, great album we found with uh, Tim Hagens and uh, Marcus Printup, tribute to Freddie Hubbard, ridiculous album, called Hub Songs, good album, find it. Uh, Tim Hagens, wonderful not as well known as he should be. The guy's amazing. Um, Marcus Printup plays in Lincoln Center. Um, wonderful album. So I had that on. But I also had, I was uh, listening to a little Beethoven, you know. I, I just, I kind of have, you know, all these different directions I go with whatever I want to listen to. Listen to Shostakovich 5 the other day. If you haven't listened to that piece, I, I pull that out and listen to it every now and again. Keeps me practicing, right? Even with all of my foibles with my nerve stuff and you know i can play you know that's about i'm about maxed out for where i can play on the right side 
today. I'm still, I can do some more with the left here. Um, so let me, just to, I don't know, send you off with something. Um, let's go back to Mr. Gazzo here. It's a fun horn. It's not the most centered instrument. I'm having a little, you know, I'm basically what I'm doing is it's not the most centered horn, but I'm kind of embracing that. Okay. Uh, I put in a bigger mouthpiece, a bigger throat mouthpiece. Uh, I have a bunch of these Warburton with the 24 throat, bigger throat. Um, so, back, let's see what I can figure out here. It's just a fun horn to play, you know? It's fun. It's not the most centered thing. But it sure gets a big sound, man. I see where, you know, you know, Gazo, biggest sound, obviously, in the... Just a huge sound. Um, and it's fun. Just fun, fun, fun. Like with all the mutes, what I'm talking about today. Just find stuff that keeps you going. You know, whatever the hell it is. Maybe it's... For me, sometimes it's, oh, I'll buy a new mouthpiece, and I've... I've done my share of buying $200 mistakes, you know. Um, but sometimes it's enough to just, you know, keep you going. They're, you know, gigs are more scarce, frankly, I think, than they've ever been. And so, But I still want to play. So this is, you know, doing my little videos, my little silliness, talking to you guys. That's a big part of what keeps me going. I, I you know, I said in the last video, this is what I'm supposed to have been doing since I was 19, 18, 19 years old. And I'm still at it, you know, still going. And I, I'm i having fun with this stuff, you know. All these years, all the miles, <laughs> you know, I'm still having fun, man. Um, so, uh, anyway, that's uh, probably enough for the moment. Uh, arms are hurting, so let's cut it out for today. That's long enough, 40 Five minutes almost, good lord. But I uh, hope you enjoyed it, man. Nice to, uh, you know, play for you guys and show, them all, show off my mute collection. Um, and I'll have more next time. So thanks for checking it out. See you around.